Uh, hello guys, how you doing? 5869 casting here. And uh, just before we continue on with the draft, since it'll probably be pretty uh, pretty average bands at first here, I do just want to give a quick shout out to the uh, Reddit Dota 2 League subreddit. Uh, I posted some of my casts on that subreddit and everybody was uh, really welcoming, really positive. I got a lot of feedback. I had uh, a few people email me games already. Um, as well as some people message me uh, on Reddit itself and, and say like, hey, when's the next episode coming out? I really enjoyed the casting. So I just want to say thanks a lot to everybody over there that's been super supportive. I uh, really hope to do a lot more of these. Uh, and this is one of the games that got emailed to me. It was emailed uh, by a gentleman. I believe uh, his name was Mav, uh, M-A-V. Um, and uh, he dropped me off a couple games, so they looked pretty exciting. I'm going to just start with this one. Um, and there's one more and then... I have another one, so we should be uploading about three games and having them uh, all up by uh, Sunday. So hopefully we'll have three games for everybody over there to take a look at and uh, really enjoying this. So we've got Undying, Gyro, Queen of Pain, already uh, three like tier one heroes in terms of 6.84. Um, all fantastic heroes, even after the Undying changes is in 6.84C, I believe it was. Um, he's still a, a very formidable hero. He's really good. Leshrac, though, we don't see uh, too often in the, in the first phase. Sometimes, you know, we see him in, in perhaps the second phase of banning. But um, maybe there's something I don't know. Maybe somebody likes to pick up Leshrac. Um, looks like we're going to have uh, the Prinny Squad stack versus uh, the Kid Fuckers. So, uh, you know, not a name you see all too often. But uh, pretty excited nonetheless. It looks like Trash is going to be uh, the captain up against Saf over here on the side of Prinny Squad. And a Witch Doctor... Uh, first pick, so pretty good hero. Uh, his stun sometimes difficult to deal with. Death Ward obviously scaling very well into the late game. It is physical damage, especially if you can get an Aghanim Scepter, get those bounces going. Um, just look at it go, you know. And we'll see what the Radiant wants to pick up there. So maybe if there was a Wisp, perhaps pick on the Radiant. They're going to have to think twice about it as Witch Doctor, a pretty good hero that deals with the Wisp, you know. You relocate in and you get casked and, uh, that's pretty much it. There goes your gank. Perhaps there goes the team fight, the split push, whatever it may be. Um, you know, heal is obviously pretty good against keeping heroes alive when the ganks do come around. Maledict, uh, another good spell. If you can if you can get a double hero Maledict from the, the relocate in, that's pretty strong already. And a Rubik, I'm already invested in this game. Rubik, one of my favorite heroes. I love it. He's probably going to be a support. I would love to see him as a core, but uh, who knows. Lena, another strong pick. Could be run as a support. Or at the same time as a mid lane. Uh, but a Rubik Lina, like even just a, a dual support, would be pretty strong roaming combo. You know, you lift somebody, toss them back, light striker race, pretty easy to hit on a target that uh, can't really go anywhere. Follow it up with like a Dragon Slave Fade Bolt, and uh, really, that's already almost a kill there. And the Rubik makes you play very different in team fights as well, because as a hero like a Witch Doctor, <laughs> as a hero like a Pudge, you're very scared to give away a good spell. You know, you don't want to give away the hook. You don't want to give away the death ward. And, you know, it's just the fear of giving away a spell like that that'll that'll make you play differently altogether. So even, you know, if this Rubik isn't all too effective, they're going to be playing, you know, maybe a little bit safer. We're going to see a Meepo ban, unfortunately, as I, I do love to play Meepo as well. I love to watch Meepos uh, most of the time, that is, unless, you know, we're just going uh, for the 70-minute uh, split push, boots of travel Meepos, uh, which still are going to be fun. You know, you get those blink poofs. Always enjoyable to watch uh, supports just melt in the back lines there. As we'll see f what the ban out from the Dyer is going to be. Um, I'd imagine they're they're still going to be looking to ban carries as, as maybe they're not sure if this is um, a core Lena or support Lena. And, and they know for sure. I mean, they don't know for sure, actually, if it's going to be a safe lane Lena. But it's pretty safe to assume that the Lena is either going to be mid or a support. So they're going to be banning out the Earthshaker. And uh, could have been a support or an offlane Earthshaker ban there. Uh, I imagine a support or shaker ban, which means they, they are assuming that this is going to be a core Lena who, uh, you know, I think Lena against a Pudge mid, the Lena's probably going to win the lane. Um, she's got the physical damage if she needs it. She's long range. You know, she can be careful of those hooks. Dragon Slave, obviously, she's got really good wave clear. Um, and the Pudge, not so much. You know, he's got to perhaps spend Rot and he doesn't want to do that. Maybe you get kind of low. You got to be careful of the Laguna Blade. And a Clockwork pick, so again, Radiant, uh, a man after my heart as Clockwork, another one of my favorite heroes. I love watching this guy uh, ever since TI3, well, I mean, even since before TI3, but it's definitely uh, it's definitely gotten better since TI3 Bulba, you know, versus LGD. 
Liquid's doing it. Perhaps uh, today Pretty Squad will be doing it up against uh, the kid fuckers here. <laughs> I'll, I'll never, that'll never get old. Actually, it probably will get old, but uh, it'll never get easier to say. I can tell you that much. Um, anyways, on the side of the dire here, they're going to be probably looking for another support. Perhaps they don't want to give too much away. They've still got uh, a two picks. And even if the radiant, I mean, the radiant's only got one band. So if they're going to ban one of the cores and it's going to be a viper. So, hmm, hmm. Could we be looking at a, a support pudge pulling mid lane? Perhaps, uh, some Jenkins Dota. Could we be looking at an off lane pudge or just a dual lane with a pudge? as well a dual lane uh, i don't think would be the best idea as that means uh this clockwork's probably going to get a lot more out of a dual lane you know he always he already gets quite a bit out of a tri lane just with flare and he's he's usually a safe support with cogs and everything although unless you know they ran the viper against him maybe but then we're moving into a lot of funky lanes and you know i, I don't want to go that far into it we'll just see it looks like a razor pick the good old uh, Razor versus Viper, easy uh, easy win there, you know, you just get the uh, who beats Viper, Razor, just uh, if you can get somebody that's gonna, you know, if you go look, dotacounters.com, I don't know if that's a website, but if it was, I'm sure it would list uh, Razor up there against Viper, steal his damage, give him a couple right clicks, you know, um, so we'll see if that's gonna be a, a mid Razor, but uh, maybe a lot of mind gaming gonna go out this game. Uh, people just going to be throwing lanes or throwing heroes in whatever lanes they want. And, you know, maybe it could be screwing up both teams and Ursa as well. And Ursa against a Razor. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, he's not bad by any means against a Razor. But again, a Razor is like the anti carry, uh, is the best way I could say you could classify that. Especially against a, a melee carry who's got to stay up close. He does have a slow. Uh, which is pretty helpful, and his new ultimate is, is actually so scary. You know, he, he takes 80% less damage. Like, how is that even... I, I don't know, you know? It's definitely difficult to deal with. Uh, obviously, it's not OP or, or broken, whatever you'd want to say, but uh, definitely hard to deal with, and uh, already a funky draft, and, and this is what I like most about in-houses is that, uh, I mean, we've got a Pudge and an Ursa, so I'm already game. We've got a Rubik as well. We do see that in competitive Dota, and, and Wisp being banned out, Wisp Ursa... Uh, would have been a, a good, uh, you know, good option there. And we'll see perhaps like a Avenge pickup wouldn't be that bad either. Uh, you know, you can stun the Razor, perhaps swap to break the link, um, swap and do a hook or a dismember, something like that. Uh, Venge is good at maybe taking somebody out of the clockwork hook. I think Venge is, a, is actually a fantastic pick this game. And the negative armor, you can do Roshan so quickly, uh, you know, with the, the negative armor from the Venge, as well as maybe the bonus damage or later on, and, and they're not going to be expecting even, like, if we wanted to get really cheeky here, which I would love to see because it's an in-house, you know, you're not playing for TI, you you pick up that Vengeful Spirit, and you do a level 1 Rosh because you'll have two melee heroes, three ranged heroes, you've got the heal from the Witch Doctor, the negative armor, oh man, I'm getting my hopes up, I, I, I feel like it's not going to happen, but... Uh, Level 1 Roche or not, I think Avenge would be a fantastic pick. Uh, maybe depending on this last pick, it may be a little bit different. But all around, I think Venge would be a lot of fun to see. It'd be a, a pretty crazy game, really. Um, a, a fairly defensive support. You know, she's kind of squishy. So if, if they do choose to run a, a, a Rubik and Lina uh, roaming early on, she's got to be a little bit careful, honestly. But, uh, you know, she's still got a nice stun. She can turn around a gank very quickly. Especially when you've got an Ursa and, you, and you've got a Viper, you know. Uh, next thing you know, you got two, three stacks of Fury Swipes on you and you're losing, uh, you know, a little bit of armor and uh, that's it. When you're Alina, when you're a Rubik, you, you're not ready for that. And we'll have to see. Uh, again, I would really love to see Avenge, but if that's not the pickup, obviously I'm sure it's still going to be a great pickup. Really uh, putting in the last little bit, seeing what their, their safe lane is going to be here on the side of the Prinny Squad. And... Still such an open pool. Safe lane against this Ursa. There's going to be a lot of fighting early on. Uh, and that's what the Radiant has to kind of recognize. Um, so maybe they want to pick up somebody like... Um, even a Luna is, is pretty solid. You know, maybe the Ursa is going to get a BKB. And then, uh, you, you know, it's going to be a little bit more scary against the Luna. Because you won't be able to use uh, your abilities as much. But uh, a Luna is still a pretty good... Uh, 
Corrup fighting early on, or even a Bristleback. We've still got the Bristle in the pool. I'd, I'd want to say stay away from, from melee carries like a Bristle because, you know, Viper just Viper strikes them and, and they're kind of useless. They get kited around pretty easily with the Viper and what have you. But really, they've still got like a Rubik and Alina who are going to be able to control the team fights as well as the Clockwork. So I think a Bristleback still a pretty good pickup here. Uh, he's going to be really tanky. It's going to be a little bit tougher for the Pudge to, to hook him and just ult him because uh, a lot of the time you get that last little turn and then a Badden. So not a bad idea. I believe you can use a Badden shield if somebody's getting Pudge ultied and it will take the ultimate off. Uh, it'll it'll purge it essentially. Uh, I don't think you can purge Viper Strike. don't think you can purge Maledict. Uh... But it'll be able to soak up some damage from the Ursa, and that's good as well. Um, it will be a, a core. This is really weird. I want to say it's going to be a core Lina with an um, a Baden Rubik support, but it, it could be a core Baden with a Lina and a Rubik in lane, you know, behind him. Just because the thing is, if you run a core Lina. Um, you have to be a lot more careful with leaving her in lane than you do uh, a core a bad and he's a lot harder to kill especially when he hits six um, you know he is he's gonna have to play a little bit safer when his supports do ha leave lane because he is uh, a melee core but I, I think it would probably be best if they run a Rubik Lina roaming because they can put a lot of pressure here on the side of the dire um, the Lina will scale a little bit better than the Abaddon because uh, if she does manage to get her hands on an Aghanim Scepter or even an early Yule Scepter, she can do a lot of damage. But but mainly the Aghanim Scepter is going to be really helpful against the Viper, changing that to pure damage, against the Pudge, you know, changing that over to pure damage. And uh, a lot of magic resistance passives on uh, on both teams here. Uh, three. So not, not too often we see that. And then we've already got the Ursa taking 80% less damage and a, a Visage. So, Wow. That is, uh, okay. Not something you see every day. Visage and Witch Doctor, pretty good roaming uh, duo as well. Um, and we'll have to see how this works out for them. Now, you know, they don't have a Drow. Uh, surprisingly, they picked up Visage last and, and not first. So, perhaps they're saying, we'll get the birds. We'll block the hook with the birds. Um, we'll stun the Razor if, if he's, you know, trying to steal some damage here. And looks like we do have a disconnect, but that just gives us some more time to talk here. But he's saying, you know, we'll stun, uh, we'll stun this Razor if he's trying to steal damage. You know, uh, we can pop the Abaddon shield easily and, and not deal too much damage with the birds. Or, uh, maybe stun the Clockwork inside Cogs. Um, you know, if, if the birds are around somebody, you know, if somebody's solo pushing... And you're afraid of this Lena, uh, because whatever, she's got a Yule Scepter. You can just kind of run the birds nearby. And, and if she Yules them up, you know, you can just stun them with the birds. And, and that kills the gank, because she's not going to get that Light Striker array. And, and you can just turn around. She probably won't be able to hit it. Um, or you can maybe even turn around and, and kill this Lena, which could be effective. Um, can't imagine, unfortunately, that we're going to see a level 1 Roche. Uh, I think the Venge probably would have fit uh, a little bit better than this... Uh, visage here but nonetheless still still a solid pick they're gonna have a lot of early game aggression here they've got the ursa the visage the witch doctor um they're gonna be fantastic at fighting early on and and i believe it will be an off lane pudge and uh, we'll be looking to a mid viper uh, perhaps an aggro tri lane here with the ursa witch doctor visage um and then you kind of force the uh the supports of the rubik and lena to sit in their lane if that's what they're going to do here, and uh, it will be scary for sure, but when you pick a Visage, he's a fantastic tri-lane hero. He gets those soul assumption charges up so quickly, um, and you can just blow up somebody like Alina, somebody like a Rubik uh, very early on, even an Abaddon, even with shield and everything. Maybe they're not going to want to run it because you can you can throw the shield up, and it's it's going to get rid of one of those soul assumptions most likely if, if you time it well, and You've got the heal. Rubik's kind of defensive as well. The Fade Bolt's going to reduce your damage. So you, you, you'd you want to say, yeah, run an aggressive tri -lane, But at the same time, when you're up against these three heroes, uh, it's certainly more difficult. So we'll kind of see how this goes. I'm, I'm excited to see this Pudge. Um, does he have any, any rock and set or anything? Doesn't look like anything too fancy. But 
I'm excited to see how this guy plays. Uh, I'll try not to be too hard on him if he misses a hook because, you know, uh, nobody's perfect here. And uh, here we go. The goals are uh, getting thrown out and uh, the game's going to start. We'll see if perhaps they're going to get... Um, if you do grab hook at level one, which is a little bit unorthodox, but if you do grab it and uh, you stand right here, you can hook somebody at this rune. And honestly, not a lot of people expect it. And if you've, if you've, if you've got your visage and your, wick do your witch doctor nearby, uh, even your viper, that's going to be a pretty early kill as it looks like. We've got a smoke here already. This isn't going to be a level one Roche. We've got a couple sentries as well. So perhaps just looking to um, contest the jungle here, which I do like to see. Um, but is it going to be an aggressive try lane? If you're going to contest the, chung the jungle this heavily, there's a smoke. So here we go already. Let's just zoom it out. Are they going to pop it? Look at this. They're running right into it. Smoke is going to break. The cask is going to be on two. This lead is already dead. There's the shield light striker ray. Actually going to land on three. The slow from the visage. Is it going to be enough to continue on with the kill? As well as the slow from the viper here. Poison going to tick him down just a little bit. Are they going to continue to chase? He does have another shield up. Rubik does have lift. So could lift and do another stun. Is he going to lift him up on the cliff? You're actually going to break the trees. Not the most effective there. And uh, they've got to be careful. There's the shield going down down and that should spell the end but a nice first blood here on the side of the dire they did place this ward um which i believe this ward i don't know i think it's this bush will block both camps i could be wrong i believe this ward may as well i think it blocks this one for sure as uh, the, the the box in this camp is really weird it's fairly large but looks like we're not going to be running an aggressive tri lane but that just means it's going to be a little bit easier for this pudge here bot lane after getting uh you know some exp a nice early first blood here uh he actually didn't get any exp here uh the viper uh, we've got the bounty runes there it looks like the viper on the clock did and we'll just uh just go right into the lanes the viper and the razor the razor should have a fairly easy time here uh if he plays it well the viper you know still a good lane controller so Maybe it'll be a little bit more even than expected. And there's the sentry ward. Already going to deward this camp. So a nice little find here from the dire after that first blood. And, and that means this clock's going to have a, a, a little bit more of a difficult time here. Um, he can be a, a little bit safer. You know, he can throw out a cogs here if they're going to run up towards him. But uh, the dire spending two observers here bot lane. And not too often we see that. It looks like it does not block this camp. Only uh, this medium camp here. And, and they'll still be able to use that pull camp. Which is a little bit unfortunate for the pudge here who... Does opt to go for a hook first, and uh, I, I don't see offlane Pudge all too often. I'm not sure if usually you go for Rot first, no matter what, but uh, I don't think there's any issues with that whatsoever here. Is Rubik zoning him out very well. Um, this is really kind of the best position you can hope to stand at when you are playing a support. So uh, perhaps if you guys are looking to get better at supporting, guys, um, you will just kind of want to hang around here. Usually your creep waves around here. You won't draw aggro, razor mid while in the, mi in the mid lane. He's just going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Viper, and that's not what you want to do. Uh, but at that point, couldn't really run. I'm not sure what led to that. He did try to steal some damage, but only 14, so maybe thinking it was a little bit more. And uh, Dyer with an early lead already, and this Ursa really controlling his lane as well. And, and what can Clockwork hope to do? They're already pushing the lane out here. Is, uh, they will get a stack, a nice little stack, and, and they'll start to pull. And once they do this, Clockwork's going to have a much rougher time here, but... A nice little kill from this Viper already early on. Let's see what he's bringing. Looks like he's going to grab a bottle here. And Lena going to take the Bounty Rune bot lane. Does have a couple wards here. And if she uh, maybe wants to throw a sentry up there. It looks like she might use the sentry around the rune here. Just moves so slow. 295. And here we go. Clockwork. Just uh, going head to head up against this Witch Doctor who does still have cask. He's got a haste rune. Here comes the Viper. Body blocks. Are we going to have them? Maybe, maybe not. He's getting body blocked himself here. We do have cogs still. A couple more right clicks in, and that's another kill going out the way of this Viper. Meanwhile, here comes the air, so he's going to get the slow. This is going to be a very dead razor here. And the slow from the visage as well is going to be enough to get the kill. And already four for nil. Two minutes and 50 seconds in. Radiant is not looking too good already. We've seen a couple nice rotations. A nice early first blood on the side of the dire. Uh, a D ward as well, which is absolutely huge. And... You know, they don't have too many comeback mechanisms on the side of the Radiant here. You know, you can't stack, uh, you know, triple stack, quad stack a large camp and, and have somebody clear it. Um, 
you know, maybe your Abaddon is going to go in there with shield, but it's going to take him longer, you know. You don't have a, a Tiny. You don't have a Shadow Fiend that can easily do it. You don't have uh, even a Medusa or something like that. And Rubik, he's actually going to get hooked. Is he going to go down here? This could be huge. No, he's going to get shielded. And a nice little pickup from Pudge there, though. That's going to be a lot of regen burnt on the support. And that's important because he's not going to be able to roam as easily. And it looks like, are we actually moving into a dual lane mid here? If this is going to be a, a dual lane mid, this Pudge is going to have the time of his life. He's not going to get pressured whatsoever. The Rubik's barely got a stun. The Abaddon does have his slow, but uh, really, this Pudge is, is tanky enough. And, and look at this. Again, this Witch Doctor is going to be moving towards this ward along with this Clockwork. And, and he does have the cask if he wants to throw it out here. There are two heroes. Viper's coming up. He's at about half HP. Has his headdress. He's going to get cogs in. He's going to go down Light Striker Ray as well as... No, the Light Striker Ray is going to stop this Witch Doctor. And look at this. Is he going to get maybe this this uh, Clockwork? It looks like no. The uh, It's going to be enough damage here. And, and there's another beautiful Dragon Slave. Just got the first one on the Viper there. He's going to go down from that. And, and look at the damage onto this Visage before he can get enough points into his passive here. Gravekeeper's Cloak. Usually uh, what keeps that Visage pretty tanky, but doesn't have any points into it yet. Getting uh, spectators talking here, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, no major problems here. Like, uh, he doesn't know anybody playing, and uh, hopefully that's uh, what these casts will do, you know? Get a little bit uh, more people known, you know? Maybe this Pudge, he's going to be uh, stand-in dot stand -in. Maybe he's going to be a little more known for his Pudge now. Uh, maybe he's going to be uh, a little bit more known for his Witch Doctor, getting some nice casts, full channel death wards. Um, you know, maybe Trash is going to be a little bit more known for his drafting. Who knows? And here we go. Static click up on a Hazel. Not going to be too much more here. Some really obvious mistakes, and, uh, you know, it happens. But uh, we're not watching uh, TI qualifiers here, just having some fun with the Reddit Dota in-house league. No problems there. And uh, the Dyer are actually leading the last hit board. Well, I guess you could say the top three. The Ursa's nearby, uh, but he does have, you know, some kills and some rotation series. He's got one kill and one assist compared to the Abaddon, who, who doesn't have anything like that. He's, you know, he's 30 for 18, so he's denying quite well. Uh, this Pudge using an Illusion Rune very effectively. Going to block up some camps here, so nice of him there. And uh, meanwhile, mid lane, Witch Doctor looks like he wants to make a go here. There's the Viper Strike. Witch Doctor not really making a move just yet, though, and a little bit too late. Perhaps not expecting that. He's getting pinged out here by the Clockwork. Lena's sitting right behind there, though, so maybe not going to be able to get a kill. Meanwhile, it looks like they want to make a turnaround here. Look at the double damage here. This is going to be a dead Rubik, I'd imagine. Soul Assumption, perhaps, right after. No, the Visage got to be careful. He's tanking creeps. Hook going to be way off mark here, and look at this. They're tanking creeps now. they got to be careful. There's a flare from the Clockwork. That's a dead Visage, and Pudge is going to be able to get out here. It looks like they're going to just leave him as uh, he's a little bit too far up now, and looks like Razor's going to have to return home pick up his magic wand as Ursa does have phase boots and 1100 gold and there's the morbid mask so now they've got to be careful of the roshan pressure here as it's a very realistic scenario that this ursa can just walk into rosh she can maybe just be in the jungle though and, and force you to uh you know check rosh all the time constantly be using that flare and clockwork only at level five now really wants that level six here uh, and once you get level 6, you can pressure so much more. Unfortunately, Witch Doctor are going to tank up a little bit of that tower. Pop a salve. Tad too early there for him. And got to be careful with that aggression. Uh, a lot of people do have difficulty understanding uh, what's going to aggro when. And uh, that's a major part of Dota. You know, when are the creeps going to aggro? When are the towers going to aggro? And uh, if you don't have that figured out, you can't play as effectively, unfortunately, as, uh, you know, some other people. But no problems there. As we do see, the Razor just going to throw out little bit of harass on Hazel mid lane. Well, Nama still having the time of his life bot lane. Is he moving straight into a basher? I believe so after treads. He's just going to grab a basher. Uh, normally, I like to see some type of lifesteal. Usually a Mask of Madness, which is pretty huge here because uh, I guess the nerfs maybe don't make it as good. But Abaddon's already got his passive. Meanwhile, mid lane. Looks like we're going to make a go here. There's the Witch Doctor. Cask is going to go thrown out, but second jump, not going to be on him. It doesn't matter. There's Viper Strike, Soul Assumption. Razor's even going to pop Eye of the Storm there, but not going to be too effective as 
A nice gank on the side of the dire. So rotating supports of the Witch Doctor in the visage. Going to be pretty effective. Meanwhile, Pudge is looking for a hook. I'm not sure how Abaddon's passive did get triggered there. His ultimate, I believe. Maybe tanking up creeps a little bit too much. And looks like they're uh, pinging him out. Lena's running for it. She does have light strike away, but not going to get the range for it. I don't believe... Pudge can just probably should have just ran up there and looks like he's gonna go down now. No, Light Striker Ray is gonna miss. Do we have the lift? There it is. And Pudge, a little bit of a misplay there. Could have just ran up river here and been absolutely fine as they couldn't have chased him. I don't believe. Maybe they could have got him, but it would have been much safer than trying to juke up back towards your uh, your high ground there. But an unfortunate death, nonetheless. The uh, the dire still leading five to three and. Viper just kind of controlling this lane still. He's forty eight for eighteen up against the fifteen for one. So. Rays are having a bad time here. Really not enjoying his life up against this Viper. Gotta be careful. That Viper dealing so much damage now. He's quite far ahead. He's already level 8 against the Viper, who's only level 6. So a 2 level advantage. And here we go. He uses the Roshan attempt right away. It's gonna get bashed right when he uses uh, his W there. I think it's overcharge or over something. Not overcharge. Overpower. That's what it is. And look at this. Selena saying, hey guys, what's going on here? Light Strike Ray going to go down. But there's the cask as well. Going to continue to bounce to Roshan. That's a dead Lena. Pudge is going to get the long range hook. And they're just going to go right back into Roshan. And can the Radiant hope to stop this? They've got a Clockwork. Is he 6 yet? No. Still not level 6. So close to it though. And look at this. Now they're going to have to tank with the Witch Doctor here. Pudge does have his ultimate. He did. Or excuse me. The, this uh, Ursa does have his ultimate, which he did use. And that's very important, using it on the Roshan here. They are pinging out the side of the Abaddon, and this Pudge is getting a little bit squished. There's Rot being stolen, not Hook, which is what you'd want here. And can they stop the Roshan? There's a DD being grabbed up, but it doesn't matter. Abaddon's too late. Can he perhaps get a kill here? Even if he does, he could go down and turn, and that's going to mean that it's going to be worth it. Your Hook off the mark. Clockwork does get six, but he's going to miss the Hook onto the Witch Doctor. 920 saying, wow, and can we turn these guys off here, perhaps? No, unfortunately. Sorry about that, guys. Hopefully, uh, you know, it's not that big of a deal, but... Just wanted to check if we could turn them off. And you don't want any trash talk from the spectators here. Uh, I'm not sure if, if if they can see this in-game. I hope not. That'd be pretty uh, pretty annoying. Pudge is going to get a hook on her tower and pop the Abaddon ultimate. So he's got to play a little bit safer. Pudge is just going to bottle up after that as well. So I'm playing fairly well here. Why is your team called the kid fucker? So <laughs> got to bring that one back. We were raping you. All right. Well, fair enough. Maybe you got some kids on the side of the rating here and uh, trash saying no reason. A lot of chat coming out from both teams here and uh, spectators as well. Wow, these guys are really, uh, really just throwing down the gauntlet here. And uh, we're going to get a little bit of a, a lull in action here as both teams are going to stop fighting after that Aegis. I would like to see the Ursa really pressure with it instead of moving into the jungle. But maybe he's just looking for the Blink Dagger first. And Clockwork rotating mid lane. Cancel on the hook. Going to miss another hook. Unfortunately, onto the Witch Doctor as well. And here's Viper. He's going to get lifted up and thrown up on the cliff. That's not where you want to throw him, Kenny. You got to be careful. He's got that Viper Strike. We've still got the ultimate from the Witch Doctor. Cask is going to continue to bounce. There's the Witch Doctor ultimate as well as the Laguna Blade spent. It's going to be a full duration though. And it doesn't matter. What a fight from the side of the Dire there. Radiant Viper getting lifted up onto the high ground. Not the play you want to use there. And the Laguna Blade with no follow-up. Witch Doctor just laughing straight to the bank this game. And here we go. They're going to move to pressure the tower. The Dire, I imagine they've moved into a huge lead here. We'll try to take a look already. Looks about to be 6k here. And um, both EXP and net worth at about 6k. So nice little uh, early game lead for them. And they do have, I mean, both teams have a mid-game lineup. You know, this Abaddon's not going to scale late. Really, nobody's going to scale very well late game. You know, Razor, probably the best hero that's going to scale in this game. Uh... But even then, it, it's not fantastic. And I, I kind of want to agree with 920 here. Uh, it's going to be probably a stomp. Um, 
unless we get some nice plays out of the clockwork. You know, you cogs in the Sursa, you force staff out. Um, but even then, his team's going to have a force staff perhaps by that time. Viper, though, just as they're saying they've got nothing to stop him, he's going to go down and the clockwork's going to get away. So finally landing a hook there is Saf. So nice little pickup from him. He lands the one that's really necessary. You know, you don't you don't really need to pick off a Witch Doctor, but if you can grab a Viper, uh, that's going to be nice for you. Let's say, and yeah, that was a misplay from Dyer. Eh, you know, not too bad. We'll take a look at the vision here. Is, uh, the Radiant. You know, it's not too bad. They've got vision on the entrance of their jungle, but really nothing around here. Uh, they've got nothing for top lane whatsoever, so this Abaddon would have to be very careful. And the Dyer, not too much vision as well. And you'd really expect the Dyer to expand their vision game. Do we have wards coming out? Yeah, there's a ward there, but you'd really expect them to up the vision game. Uh, how do you get ahead? You get more ahead, and, and the best way to do that is... Uh, just by grabbing up some wards and, and really pressuring their jungle, pressuring their ancients, you know, staying off map. And then these heroes have to play so differently. When there's no Ursa on the map, can you push out this lane? Maybe the Abaddon can, but even then it's going to be scary for him. Meanwhile, it looks like Radiant's going to be rotating top with four heroes for this Viper yet again. It looks like that's who they want to go on. And Dyer's just hanging out bot lane. They're not going to be able to save him. No TP reactions. Viper Strike's going to go out. But there's the shield as well as the mech from the Viper. He's going to survive a lot of these ultimates, but doesn't matter. Sash is going to TP home and... Now they're going to look to pressure a tier 2. Fuck you, Saf. <laughs> My work here is done. Uh, nice little bit of trash talk. It wouldn't be an in-house league. Pudge going to miss a hook there, unfortunately. Onto the Razor, who's going to get a nice bit of damage onto the air. So who still does have the Aegis. It's going to blink out of tower range there. And looks like they will probably successfully defend this tier 2. So a little bit of a misplay from the Dire. Not using the most out of their space. Probably should have just pressured this bot lane. If you can get rid of this Radiant tier 1, you know their jungle's way more split off from the rest of the map. And... They've got to be much more careful here. Looks like they are looking to pressure perhaps this clockwork. And there it is. Can we get the hook? Ursa's in the way of the hook. Uh, there we go. There's the hook on the staff. He's going to go down almost certainly. There's the Witch Doctor ultimate. It's going to zone out some heroes maybe. But that's about it. Nama's coming in from the background. Saf's still alive. He's going to turn around and live. Kasky's going to get thrown out. Meanwhile, Nama's just going to turn around and chase his punch. Ultimate going to get popped here. Razor's going to throw the Eye of the Storm down as well. He's going to get a kill onto the Ursa, whose Aegis did go down. Hazel's coming in on this Viper. Does have Viper Strike. Is going to mech up. Maybe they can turn around. He's going to throw out the Cask again, but he doesn't have the Death Ward. It doesn't matter. The Cask is jumping. Slugzin's gonna go down as well, so that's a two for three when all's said and done. Perhaps Kenny's gonna go down. Are we gonna have the bird stuns? Looks like only another couple seconds. Meanwhile, Viper just gonna slow him down here, and Kenny's gonna go down as well. There's the cast. Bird stun number one. Bird stun number two. Kenny's gonna go down, so a three for three when all's said and done. And what started off as a nice team fight on the side of the radiant. There's the hook in under tower on Hazel. Can they get the kill? Maybe Saf going a little bit too aggressive. Is gonna pop the blade mail here in Hazel. Is he gonna go down? He's on 200 HP, 180 HP. Saf, he's gonna go down again triple kill down on hazel and saf curses unfortunately for you buddy not going to be able to get that kill getting a, a little bit too uh aggressive and third time's the charm the other two hooks were a kill but lena's gonna come up with the laguna blade the mech as well as the water they're not gonna get a kill on saf punch is gonna pick him up viper is gonna get a dominating four kills going to the way of that viper and uh, i i want to say you know it wasn't a bad play by the Lena. He was so close, honestly. He was so close. Maybe she should have expected the mech. Not the wand so much as... You know, the wand. You don't normally expect the wand charges, but at least maybe the mech. And unfortunately for the Radiant, not going to get the kill. Rocket Flare is going out, but it's not going to hit him low enough. And he's actually going to land around the Witch Doctor. Got him. And the Radiant's just going to pair up and move through their jungle. And uh, guess who's right around the corner here? There's a bird stun. Gonna land on two as well as Ursa. Getting his soul on two. His, his, excuse me, his damage is gonna be stolen. There's the ultimate. So he's not gonna take any damage. The ultimate's stolen by Rubik though, nicely enough. Which means next team fight, he's gonna be a lot harder to kill. And they're gonna continue to chase here. Maybe not. Slugs and saying, hey guys, I wanna go. But Pudge on the background. Is he gonna perhaps get hooked? No, it looks like the hook did miss from Saf, unfortunately. There's a hook from Pudge just barely touching this Rubik. Not gonna be enough to get him and... Fortunately, Notion, what are you doing, buddy? A little bit too far up. There's the blanket from the Ursa. He's going to go down. Lift onto this uh, this Ursa, though. Going to throw him down to the low ground. Slugs in, stealing more damage. Wish Doctor Ultimate, not going to be enough. And neither is the Soul Assumption. Saf does have a hook in 30 seconds. Perhaps he'll hit this one. Just kidding, Saf. And uh, 
We'll just slow this game down. It looks like top lane. Nama's going in on this Viper. Can he perhaps get the kill? The slow on both heroes, but it looks like it should be enough to kill the Viper. One more right click, perhaps. There's a bottle up. No, he's not going to survive. There's a dominating going to the Abaddon. Ursa does that blink. Abaddon ult in 20 seconds, but it probably won't be enough time. He's just going to turn on the Ursa. The shield pop, perhaps going to be enough. The heal, throw down the heal. No, the ultimate from the Ursa, reducing 80% of that damage is absolutely huge. He's got his ultimate in 10. Maybe he could bait it. Perhaps it looks like that's what he wants to do. There's the hook though. Sap coming in from long range. He's going to get a kill on the Ursa. Saying hello, buddy. And there it is. The hook's going to hit. Meanwhile, Trash Invis, he's just going to walk by. We do have the ultimate, though, on Nama. He's just going to turn out on the Witch Doctor. Not going to get healed up, though. They're not going to right-click him. He's going to get hooked up. Beautiful timing from the punch. Meanwhile, Saf taking damage from the birds. Cogs to disrupt the fight. It's not going to be enough. Maybe it is. Laguna Boy going to go down here on this, the, this Visage. And a nice Light Striker Ray going to land another kill. So a double kill there for Notion. Kenny walking up say, hey, I'm helping too. And uh, what a team fight that was. So... A nice 3 for 1. Abaddon just barely surviving, but Pudge, a nicely timed hook there. Going to kill the Abaddon, and I'm not sure what these guys are saying. Did Rubik actually steal the birds there? Oh, he did. So a beautiful pickup from Rubik. Going to help them push out these lanes. If this guy's uh, Flash, maybe he's good with his micro. A little bit of a StarCraft joke there for you fans. I say joke, but it was actually pretty awful, so we'll just leave that one on the back burner. Probably never use it again. But... It Anyways, a nice pickup on these birds who may go down, actually. Just as I'm saying, maybe he's good at microing. He's uh, perhaps going to give them up. They are getting pinged out here from the Witch Doctor saying, Hazel, they're right beside you. They're right beside you too, buddy. And uh, so far, a lot of fun this game. 19 to 12, only 20 minutes in. Feels like we've been here a lot longer. I'm not sure if that's a good thing, but it's been a fun game so far. Razor's going to start pre pressuring up mid against this uh, Ursa here as... Still hasn't gotten much item progression here after his Blink Dagger. Does have 1,000 gold, so we'll see if he's going to move into the Vladimir's. Uh, 6.84, you know, Viper. Going to be getting, I, I believe it's 10% on ranged heroes, but 10% uh, lifesteal on that Viper now. 10% lifesteal on that Visage and on that Witch Doctor. Maybe game breaking? Probably not. Here we go. They're going to make it go onto this Abaddon. There's the cast going to go out. Going to start jumping to the birds, though, and uh, that's it. Not going to be able to go much further off of that. Ursa is going to use his ultimate. There's the Razor going down. Just managed to catch the end of that one. And uh, very dead Razor here. As it looks like they're going to look to pressure this top tower and grab it. Still, no bot tower down. And, and oddly enough, it hasn't made much of a difference. Normally, with that bot tower down, they can't really jungle. But Radiant hasn't jungled too much whatsoever. Looks like uh, they're not going to look to save this tower. Although, Kenny... There it is. He's going a little bit too far up. There's the blink from the Ursa as well as the slow. He's got a lift. Not going to use it. The lift would have been maybe clutch here as Saf is going to TP in. Just raise him in the air, 920, saying, hey, lift him. For the love of everything. Brizo and 920, maybe not going to be uh, the most popular members after this game. Or at least uh, the most popular among these players. As Abaddon, yeah. Playing that uh, Bulldog Dota. Just going to rat down and uh, you say rat, but really, uh, I mean, you're split pushing. This is a fantastic decision right here. You can continue to split push. You have the defender's advantage if you've got a TP, which, I mean, normally you do. You can just pressure the lanes and TP home if they're going to make it to your racks. You know, you're probably not going to be looking to defend uh, this tier 2 as it's going to be difficult. Just as I say that, Razor's going out, and they've got to be careful with this Pudge. You know, maybe they did have vision on him. They do see he's not anywhere near landing a hook. And Nama doing a fantastic job of pressuring these outer lanes, and the Dyer's going to have to leave most likely here. And do they have TPs here? TP on uh, this Viper, TP on Visage. No TP on Pudge, TP on Ursa, and yeah, TP on Wish Doctor. So four to the five heroes. Pudge is going to miss his hook. They are going to continue to pressure this tower here. And Nama, he's going to pressure the tier two as well. And look at that. They're going to make a go on him, perhaps. Here's the two TPs in. It's only from the support zone with no initiation on him. Nice little trade. You know, he's going to get farm. They are going to get two towers, though. So, you know, not perhaps not the best, but let's see. This uh, graph, not too far down. It's going a little bit up and down. Uh, on the side <laughs> of the kid fuckers. TKF, we'll call them. Thank you, TKF. There we go. That's what I'll call them. And uh, EXP around the same. So not, you know, doing overly well here. Uh, but still doing fairly well, Nama. Does get a Sage and Yasha as well as 3k gold. So actually not moving in towards that Basher as I had uh, thought he would. 
Just getting the S and Y. And look at this. There is going to be the force to have to lift up. Going to throw him back probably on Hazel. Going to get the stun on Hazel as well. The ultimate from Nama is going to be popped as well as the Dragon Slate being thrown. It looks like that should be the end of the fight. Saf's nearby, but he's not going to throw a hook on anything. He did pick up the Blade Mel as well. So a pretty good item here up against this Viper. Um, not so much the Ursa because his ultimate does reduce that damage by 80% yet again. Uh, looks like this Lina is was perhaps looking for the Yule Scepter, but saying, uh, you know what, I'm just going to go for this um, Aghanim Scepter and perhaps get a Laguna out here. Roshan is up, does get scouted. I don't believe the Dire Notes though. And Nama saying, guys, they're running up right here. Maybe they're going to try to go on you. He is going to get the one slow onto the Ursa here. Strength, or excuse me, damage being stolen, but the Viper Strike immediately after. There's the cask. Wish Shock Drill not going to be channeled here. As he is going to get hooked by Sap. Meanwhile, in the end, Kenny's going to go down. A nice Glimmer Cape pickup though is going to keep him alive a little bit longer. Doesn't matter. Pudge is going to go down. It looks like he's just going to pop his ultimate TP away. Trash is going to go down. Wish Shock Drill ultimate being channeled. Not going to be enough though. Is Sap going to go down? There's the Burst on one. Looks like the. Uh, Excuse me, the stun here from this Lena is going to go down. She's going to get out just in time, though. Cask, not enough mana to be thrown in. A three for two, although it was two cores for a support and an off laner. The birds, Saf, the birds. Going to prevent you from TPing away. And the BKB pickup from Ursa. Uh, you know, uh, it is pretty good, actually. It'll stop a couple of the stuns. It won't stop your damage from being stolen. Um... So it won't stop the static link, won't stop the hook. If you're stuck in cogs, not really much you can do there. Uh, it will stop the lift though, which is pretty big. It will stop the light strike array as well, which is pretty big. Uh, I mean, really, there's not much else you could have grabbed up. You do need to get a BKB because whatever they can use to kite you, they will. And if you're an Ursa getting kited, you're not having a good time. And Not too bad here. So 3.7 on this Abaddon. Maybe going to be looking towards a Radiance. The miss chance perhaps on the Ursa. And the Viper going to help out a little bit. But it's 24 minutes in. And if you get the Radiance, it's not going to be till about 30 minutes. Most likely, maybe uh, 28. So we'll see what he's going to be picking up here. Is Rubik, does he have a four staff or anything? No. He's really going to need a mobility item here. Because he's just so squishy up against this Ursa. And look at this. The hook. Not going to land. Actually going to hook the neutral creeps. Meanwhile, Hazel is going to be alive here. The bird stuns. Nice and timely. The ultimate from the Witch Doctor. Got to be careful. Cast is going to continue to jump. Uh, but no, it's going to jump to the creeps. And it's going to be enough to perhaps keep them alive. Look at the damage coming out on the trash. As well as Hazel. Sap, a nice hook. Another nice hook here from this Pudge though. And he's just going to turn around and rot and eat the slugs and uh razor your kenny getting a little bit too close up he's gonna get viper striked he's gonna go down do we have agnum stuff yes we do so no downtime hazel's gonna survive on 90 hp a four for one a double kill for the visage and with ursa alive who did try to go on the lena here is gonna survive ursa he's just gonna say hey guys rosh is up all right let's do it should just probably run and there it is he's just gonna run probably could have just you know, maybe hit those creeps, but, uh, I mean, when you're this far ahead, it doesn't matter too much, and here we go, here's some nice aggressive warding from the Dyer, uh, and now they can really, they can blink on anybody that's moving up towards here, they can see somebody at the secret shop, uh, you know, they can see people kind of using connector, uh, which will bring you towards the, the jungle, or towards the river, and, and that'll allow them to play a lot more aggressive, and here we go, Ursa's just running right into Roshan, and just look at the damage here, especially if he uses his ultimate, it's going to be absolutely disgusting, this new ultimate giving Fury Swipes more damage. And uh, probably going to have to use it here. So there we go. He's going to use Overpower. Solar Crest being picked up here. Try to, actually did use Overpower again, but got cancelled. And there's the ultimate. Just look at the damage. Only a couple hits in Visage. Trash. Uh, saying thanks for the Aegis, man. Looks like probably, uh, probably not the best idea. Abaddon went Basher. So... Uh, I don't think he had too many options here. He probably still should have gone for some form of lifesteal. Uh, perhaps even moving into a Heaven's Halberd would have been pretty huge for his team. You can Halberd up this Ursa uh, after his BKB is down, of course. You can Halberd up this Viper at the very least. Um, really, it, it, it is hard to itemize in this situation. and um, 
28 to 16. There's the hook in though onto the Ursa. It doesn't have the Aegis actually. He's gonna BKB up, still getting his damage stolen though. Saf is gonna pop his blade mail. The ultimate from the Witch Doctor isn't gonna connect on anybody. It looks like it's actually gonna zone out this Razor here. But meanwhile, Nama's, Nama's gonna come up from the background. He's gonna get a kill onto the Witch Doctor. Saf's still alive. He's gonna TP out the Soul Assumption. Not gonna be there. Meanwhile, Trash is gonna lose the Aegis. Punch is getting a little bit too aggressive. We heard a Viper Strike going down on Kenny. Not even gonna elect to use the lift here to survive. Another bash on a trash here. Meanwhile, damage being stolen out. There's the Light Strike Array as well as the Dragon Slave, but this Hazel is so tanky right now. He's got the Agnum Scepter Trench. Meanwhile, Trash is getting uh, attacked here, and looks like he's gonna go down triple kill for Nama. Meanwhile, Lina's just gonna TP out. Viper's not gonna be able to get anything, and a 3 for 2, as well as the Aegis getting popped there. Nama's gonna go out, and ha Hazel's gonna say, alright, my time to leave here. Not gonna get a first hit bash, unfortunately. And a nice fight from the Radiant, so games are never over. Uh, you know, Ancient means everything. And there's the Viper Strike going out. It looks like maybe a little bit of a bait. Nama does have ultimate, but he's just going to elect to TP home. And probably the best idea is he's not going to be able to go up again. Maybe, you know, Hazel doesn't have that much mana, but Big Batters is close by. And he's just going to leave. No big deal there. Lina almost has her Agnum Scepter. And that pure damage is going to be absolutely huge now. Looks like Nils Olav is just going to rotate bottom alongside the Pudge. Flair is going to go down, but uh, not sure why you're trying to scout Roche. And uh, this is what they can do with this vision. They can pressure this jungle. <laughs> Oddly enough, going to the small camp first, but they can pressure this jungle. Um, I would, I, you know, if you're going to throw up a ward here, I would like to see one maybe somewhere around here uh, or even in the lane to see if anybody's in the lane. It's, this doesn't show too much, um, but it's also very hard to de ward. Uh, and I did see a gem for, for one of the teams there. Um, who did have it? Do we have a gem on anybody here? I thought I saw a gem. Maybe I'm crazy. Is it in base anywhere on, on a courier maybe? I don't know. I'm, I must be seeing things already. But looks like they are going to start rotating mid lane. Radiant does have this nice ward though. They will see them if they're anywhere near the jungle. Rubik perhaps not in the best position. Cast going to be used on creeps though. And they do see the Ursa, which is absolutely huge. Flare is going to jump over him there. And looks like maybe they're going to make a go on a Nama here as the Pudge is in position. Viper just right-clicking this tower. is moving into AC. And he, he almost has it, actually, I believe, here. And Just look at the damage from the Verds. The Viper, Ursa even coming up here, putting some damage out. And if only he had the Aegis to blink in there. Unfortunately, Trash deciding he needed it a little bit more. Does have the Solar Crest, though, so could throw that on Ursa. And... Make him very hard to kill with the ultimate. Viper Strike. Maybe uh, maybe getting fogged there. I'm not sure what happened, but perhaps just second guessing it, saying I'm not even going to waste it here. Is Lena pressuring the top lane, so the Dire, they can't go too aggressive here. And there it is. TP mid, TP top. So nice pressure from the side of the Radiant. Just, you know, slowly stretching out this game. Razor, not farmed whatsoever, though. He's only got drums, treads, probably moving into... What I imagine would be a BKB. Does have the potential of an SNY, but BKB is going to be far more useful this fight uh, up against the Pudge. Up at, you know, I mean, it doesn't cancel the hook or the dismember, uh, but it does cancel the damage as well as the rot damage, which is very important here. Hook onto the birds, perhaps looking for trash, but maybe not uh, checking in front of his hero on Saf. He's typing birds and sorry i missed that top lane earth is gonna go down dominating shit going to nama doesn't have an ultimate anymore though there's the witch doctor ultimate gonna be spent as well as the light striker gonna be used on the viper nama's just gonna say all right hey Strun, i'm going home but no more hey Strun for him pudge is he gonna hit the hook mm, no not gonna get the hook there's a creep bloody creeps and nama's gonna get out here so uh lucky hey Strun. And uh, they're just going to start pressuring mid. Looks like they're they're talking about uh, the sack. Looks like a pause is going to come out. So let's take a second and break down the items here. Pudge going to pick up mana boots. Probably not the best use of his money, although they are very cheap now. I don't think his team needs them whatsoever. Um, probably could have saved brown boots and, and maybe gone for something like a blink. He does have blade mail. Uh, isn't too bad. He's probably not going to be the, the target of... A lot of damage this fight uh, as, as the Razor is probably going to be looking towards um, this Viper and, and towards this Ursus. So maybe not the most useful. Perhaps could have looked for Boots of Travel. Uh, a Glimmer Cape would have been good as well. That item is just so ridiculous. And uh, Clockwork. 
Just pushing out mid. Looks like he's moving in towards an Aghanim Scepter so nicely for him. And Lena does have her eggs now, which is going to be a lot of pure damage. She's only level... Is she level 16? No, only level 13. So 675, I believe. It'll be 950. Yeah, there it is. 675. It'll be 950 at level 3. Uh, and although this Viper's tanky, that's uh, close to half his HP pool. Probably by the time uh, she hits level 16, he'll have a little bit over 2k. So that'll be about half his HP pool if he wants to spend it there. Uh, if he wants to spend it on the Ursa outside of his ultimate uh if he wants to spend it on the visage even pure damage uh it's gonna be almost his entire hp pool so the goals are coming out looks like we're ready to unpause here and and uh sorry i couldn't really go over the itemization i know somebody said last time i should probably work on that and really i should uh this rubik has just been buying a lot of support items making space for the for the uh Aghanim scepter here which unfortunately for him because he's died almost every team fight just getting viper striked here and it's not even like the viper strike spending it on the rubik is that bad because you've got the Aghanim scepter and really he needs he needs a four staff at the very least you know blink would be very effective as well but when you get viper striked it's not going to matter but he, he needs to be more mobile he needs to stay in the back and wait you know even just a cask steal is huge even just a Viper Strike steal is huge. Even like a Witch Doctor, you know, a Death Ward is huge. And he needs to steal these this, these ultimates. And he's not getting anything uh, because he, he just gets killed in the background every time. And Ursa, we'll see what he wants to move into next. Probably doesn't need to finish this Morbid Mask. Um, could look towards something like uh, a Lotus Orb maybe. And then what are they going to do? They can't steal your damage. Can't Laguna Blade you. Um... Uh, that wouldn't be a bad pickup, honestly. Lotus Orb would actually be pretty funny to watch here. Um, looks like Flair is going to go out on Roshan. Still uh, quite a bit of time before he's up here. And Birds, they're going to be moving into the jungle. Perhaps going to get a kill onto this Lina if they find her. Just scouting out a bit. Bird Vision is absolutely terrible, though. And uh, Ursa is actually going to pick up a Basher here. So pretty good choice on him. No big deal. And look at this. They're going to go right onto this Razor. He's going to pop Eye the Storm as well as Static Link there. There's the Viper Strike as well as the right clicks from Ursa. And just look at him explode. Absolutely just take it out of the game there. So much damage. And uh, it looks like 920 and Brizo. Uh, I feel like these guys are casting with me. Is They're saying the exact same thing. Poor guy. This is going to go down. Clockwork. We're going to get another pause out from Saf here. And. Rubik, still AFK. Where's he sitting? Yeah, he's, he actually hasn't moved from here, unfortunately. So 33 minutes into this game, uh, Dyer slowly still keeping their advantage. It looks like they're going to be able to close it out soon. He's got about 7.5k, and uh, yeah, just uh, over 7.5k in net worth here. And What do we have for the uh, KDAs here? It looks like the Viper, 13 for 4. So he's played huge this game. Saf, with a, a pretty impressive 1, 5, and 13, as an offlane clockwork, that, that's actually a, a pretty nice. Um, but he is getting overshadowed by this Witch Doctor, who is 2 2 and 18. So, Saf, uh, maybe you got to play a little bit more Witch Doctor, buddy. And then uh, you can show uh, this Witch Doctor up when he tries to play clockwork or something. Who knows? Uh, you're still doing a pretty good job. Everybody's doing a good job this game. Doesn't matter. We're playing Dota. Let's just have fun here. But 1 5 and 13, pretty good. 2 2 and 18, pretty huge. Viper. Uh, 3, 10, and 5. So, unfortunately for him, could be better. Uh, but he had a tough lane. 3, 8, and 2 on this Rubik as well. Uh, I do love to watch a Rubik, and I do play him quite a bit. So, if I do have any advice for this guy, it's uh, tell your Lina to eat shit. And uh, don't buy an Aghanim Scepter because you need a little bit more movement. And uh, I'm just kidding, obviously. Don't tell your Lina to eat shit. That's how you get reported and kicked out of a league. Uh, but just say, hey, Lena, you know, maybe just go for a Yule Scepter, and then I can get something as well. Because Yule Scepter is super effective as well. and Probably should have been what was said, but, you know, what happens in games? It, whatever. It's whatever. Uh, Visage, is he's 6, 6, and 10, so he's doing pretty well here. Does have Solar Crest as well as 2K. Uh, and Solar Crest, what a freaking item that is. And, and Nama just saying, hey, I, I'm going to right-click this Pudge and, and run away. No, no problems there. He does have AC, so he's actually uh, going to be kind of hard to deal with. And if he does manage to get an Agnum Scepter, the, the Agnum Scepter is pretty huge on Abaddon. You, you can't really tell in a team fight how effective it is. Uh, but, you know, you, you're stealing a lot of damage here. Roche respawning 20 seconds. Birds are going to scout it out, perhaps, if they stay there. So, nice and timely. What do we have on the courier? Just a couple of sentries. Flare. Oh, just barely too early, unfortunately. Lena pressuring this top lane, so nice of her to... And Pudge, no, not going to use the four staff, so 
yeah, you know, some mistakes this game, but I mean, I don't play Dota professionally. Who am I to judge? And I'm sure 920 and, you know, there's no harm being done to what they're saying, but let's just go right into the fighters. We're going to have Static Link up onto this pudge. He's going to go down almost certainly, trying to use Rot to stay alive. Meanwhile, the rest of his team's in the back. Staff is going to have to throw out the hook and just TP home as he's got nothing. No cogs, but it's going to get canceled here. A nice stun by the Witch Doctor. Light Striker right going to land on the Earth. So thankfully enough, Nub is going to go on him. Witch Doctor is going to channel the Death Ward, and the cogs are actually going to push him out. So Staff, before he dies, says here, team. I'll try to help you whatsoever. A bash onto the Ursa as well. Nama's going to go down most definitely here, though. Do they have anything? No. They don't have a mech. They've got absolutely nothing. Abaddon is going to go down. Mega kill streak to the Viper and uh, a two for two when all's said and done. Although they do get a mega kill, they got uh, two cores for two cores. And Witch Doctor does have his eggs, but Saf, I will say, nice play, buddy. That team fight would have gone a lot worse if those cogs hadn't come out and canceled that ward because he was uh, Glimmer Cape. So. Uh, a nice little play from Saf there, potentially saving uh, his team from another couple of deaths. And they are going to at least get out on this Razor here. And yeah, I, I do agree here. Too many threats from the Dire. Uh, the Witch Doctor is just so scary now. So is the Viper. I mean, even the Pudge and the Visage, you got to deal with them. They're tanky and they're hard to deal with. And the next Roshan is almost certainly going to go the way of the Dire. And that's probably going to spell pretty well the end of this game for the Radiant, who have been putting up a good fight, albeit uh, despite them being so far behind. And, and honestly, in my opinion, getting out drafted a little bit here, but they are going to see this ward go up as well, which is unfortunate for them. I, I imagine they saw that ward go up. If, if somebody was looking at the map, maybe not though. So could have been, a, you know, maybe a nice little, uh, nice little win for them. Going to get that ward down. Clock is going to push the lane and uh, here we go. Ursa. Is he going to get this Aegis? I imagine so. Trash can take the cheese this time. Ursa uh, just absolutely demolishing this Roshan here. and He's going to get bashed up before the end. And he's actually going to take the cheese. Drop the cheese. Pick up the Aegis. There it is. And the cheese is going to go the way the Pudge. So Trash not going to make the same mistake this time. And uh, nicely enough, he's just going to uh, start walking towards mid lane with his team. And pressure this mid tower. And the Radiant, honestly, the, the Radiant is not out of this game whatsoever. If we have a nice hook, we have a, a nice, uh, you know, Death Ward being stolen by this Rubik here. And you're a wizard, Harry. Yes, you are, Rubik. Uh, but they, they could have a nice team fight, honestly. This, this Eggs on the Lena, level 16, finally, is quite scary. And uh, you know what else is quite scary? A Daedalus on a Viper is pretty scary as well. Wrong chat. What did they say? No. Razor is going BKB. Wrong chat. Yeah. IDK. Damn it. You know what? Th these guys are being quite nice. You know, they, they want to see a good game here. Uh, they're my uh, my co-casters, I guess you could say, if you want to call them that. So, uh, thank you, Brizo and 920, for helping me co-cast this game, guys. Got Fortify. And uh, who fortified? It looks like top lane they fortified. So, if this fight, if this fight goes Ari and uh, something goes wrong here... Maybe this Fortify could cost them a Rax, and uh, game's not over till the Ancient's down. They've got a lot of deep push. Viper Strike going to be thrown down on Slugs, and he's going to be just fine. And it's stolen by Rubik, so a nice little spell here. And the longer they wait here, he can throw out the Viper Strike and then uh, steal something else. So that's going to be quite nice for them. Lena just a little scared. Somebody's TPing home, perhaps, and she could really be pressuring this tower with her team here. But she's just so scared. The rest of her team's saying, no, they're all here. They're going to have to defend bot. They're going to have to defend top. And can they continue to pressure here? It looks like they really don't want to give up this mid lane. So if we could see a successful defense here, this could be poor for the Dire. And Lena, honestly, you've got buyback. Just just hit the tower. If, if they're going to kill you, yeah, Brizo, he's saying it. Really, you got to be here. Look at how many creep waves she's had here. I'm not sure what she's doing. She's playing so safe. Notion, please. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're all having a heart attack right now. Here we go. There's going to be the Dragon Slave Light Striker Ray as well. Maybe. There it is, everybody. Notion moving up to hit the tower. Meanwhile, back home on Radiant, the Dyer's getting some balls, and they're pushing up, but they've got to go back. They're going to get the racks. Do they, have, do they even have TPs? I didn't even check TP on Pudge. They've got to leave. She's just going to smoke up, get hooked. Oh, oh Notion. No. <laughs> you know what? She, 
honestly, it almost worked. It almost worked. If the Pudge was in there, or if the Pudge was in the first one to TP, it would have worked. I see what was going on there. Meanwhile, sorry about that, guys. Razor is going to get a kill on the Witch Doctor in the back, and game's not over. Game's not over. Over, Ozer. I just, I'm, getting, I'm getting all sorts of messed up here. Is Brizo 920. These guys. What a couple of stand-up gentlemen. BRB, I need, I need a cigarette after that. <laughs> oh, man. You know what? Uh, if nothing else, I have a lot of fun casting these Dota 2 League in-houses. Brizo 920. I, I got to thank these. I got to... Uh, hopefully, these guys see this cast because they've been a lot of help this game. And Aghanim's picked up here on the Clockwork Staff. Maybe we'll see some plays out from him. Still only level 14, though, so... Uh, out of this entire game, this Lena with the split pushing has managed to pick up 16 before Saf, which is uh, a bit of a blunder maybe on Saf's part, but he's had uh, some good plays this game, so so can't blame him for anything here. Is... Now, is it just me, or, or is this a bug? Or do all these... Yeah, okay, I, I was wondering what was going on top lane, as every time the creep wave came in, they looked low, I thought... I, I wasn't sure what was going on there, but they all look like they have 50 less HP, and... Is there something I'm missing? Did they get their full HP when they get hit here? Looks like that may be what happened. Is who's the next creep? That's looks like yeah. They it looks like they get the full HP when they get hit, and then uh, it starts going down from there. Yeah, there it is. So uh, probably a, a little bit of a bug uh, after the last patch where there was some issues with the creep HP. And I, I hope it's. I, I can't imagine it's like this in game. Somebody would probably point it out. Probably just a little bit of a of a spectator bug here. Dota TV, uh, perhaps not. You know, the best tool, but but Valve's uh, doing what they can. You know, uh, people seriously and jokingly give Valve a lot of trash. But uh, in the end, Dota's a great game. And I should probably be breaking down this game a lot more. But that's <laughs> 42 minutes in. I'm, I'm going a little bit crazy here. And it looks like maybe the Dyer's going to be looking to push in again. And with this Rubik, or excuse me, this Clockwork Aghanim Scepter, Rubik, does he still have Viper Strike? He does. So uh, this could be a fantastic team fight on the side of the Radiant. We would like to see, obviously, level 16 on this Clockwork. But... The Radiant, could they, uh, you know, get, there's the, the blink in already from this Ursa, wants to get rid of this, aid. no, it just got reclaimed, are you kidding me? Uh, one second in, he's gonna go down, meanwhile, the, the ult in from Saf, the hook out onto the Witch Doctor, he's gonna channel the Death Ward, obviously, Blade Mail's not gonna do anything to him, Ruben, can you steal it, no, look at the bounces from the Death Ward, he's gonna steal hook, at the very least, the, uh, dust coming out here on the side of this Lina, so many low heroes on the Radiant, she is gonna throw down the, the Light Strike array, and, the Dyer's gonna pressure the tower. Buyback from the Lina. There's the, uh, at least, you know, maybe a little bit of deep push. The hook out, a long range hook on a Hazel. There's the cops. He tried to keep him up, but he brought him in the blade mill. Doing so much against Hazel Nama. He's gonna get hooked out. No, by the Rubik. There's the Dragon Slave. The Glimmer Cape's gonna go down. Maybe they can get a kill on the Hazel. Is he gonna go down here? The damage being stolen. The static click up here from the Razor. Does have Viper Strike. He's gonna have to at least use it. Nama does have his ultimate though. He doesn't even care. Three going down. Ursa, are you serious right now? Oh my god. They didn't have a timer on that Aegis. They were just guessing. 920. You missed it, man. You missed it. Dyer got a tower. Brizo, did anybody notice that? That Aegis, that was so unlucky. I say unlucky, but it was honestly a misplay from the Dyer here. You know what? I don't smoke, but I think I need a cigarette break after that one. That was absolutely ridiculous. Desolator up on the Razor now, and holy jeez. What a freaking game this is turning out to be. <laughs> Alright, you know what? I'll give Lena that. Sending the Courier to the side shop to, uh, to buy the Voidstone. Shit happens. Different game, different patch. It's only been a little bit, so, you know, don't give her too much shit. Come on. Uh, man. I cannot believe that. That. Man. <laughs> Holy crap. What a freaking game. Yeah, he went Deso, you know. Mm, he could have used the BKB, but again, the BKB is not going to be all too effective whatsoever this game. I mean, I don't know if that's what they're calling him to go, but what, what's it going to block? It's going to block pretty well nothing here other than the, the cask. And Yeah, exactly. Now, if he goes SNY, he is going to be quite hard to deal with. Uh, do they have an AC? Yeah, they have got an AC on the Abaddon. So the Eye of the Storm, the Desolator, and the AC, all these heroes are going to be low armor, and uh, this Pudge is going to absolutely melt. He's only got 1,700 HP. He's really slowed down this game. I mean, I saw him pick up Arcane Boots. I said, you know, probably wasn't the best choice. He's... Got to be careful around Nama, who does pick up a Heaven's Halberd. Going to be nice against this, what, maybe six, five-second BKB. Actually, still seven seconds. Probably because 
he instantly died last fight that laguna blade going through magic immunity absolutely huge for getting a kill onto the ursa there and clock is still second last in the net worth yeah he is forget the net worth it's why that's what it is forgot it unfortunately uh yeah look at that 800 8800 but uh honestly the, the offlane on both teams have not too much farm this game i'd say the clock's been far more useful than this pudge though um not bashing the pudge pick but i just mean in general the pudge you know has had some nice hooks some nice dismembers in team fights maybe you know i, I missed a little bit but really the staff has been playing fairly well on this on this clockwork despite not having you know the easiest game of his life lena there she gets found and she's just got to throw up the yule scepter and tp away and that looks like that's what she's gonna do and oh my god did he just get two crits in a row i think he just got two crits in a row 920 and brizo i don't know if you guys noticed that he got two crits in a row i'm absolutely just yeah he did notice that i'm absolutely disgusted that was pure luck honestly lena buddy you didn't deserve to die there if you're watching this cast and you're feeling a little bit bad about that one you just died and look at that speaking of just dying look at the damage first hit bash onto the punch he's gonna pop the cheese but a little bit of a waste look at the damage he's got no armor he's gonna blow up honestly if if the radiant wins this game uh, this is gonna be one of the most fantastic games staff what are you trying to hit buddy come on you're better than that only level 15 though so that's pretty huge not gonna get that full 3000 range and, and perhaps you know he's not used to being such a low level 46 minutes in 46 minutes in and he's such a low level I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to, to be negative, but uh, you are pretty low level. And here we go, the defense. I honestly did not expect to ever be saying the Dyer is going to be on the defense now. But uh, it seems like that's the play. And he's just going to walk up and take the racks. It's only the range rack, sure. But, I mean, that lane's going to be pushing. It's going to slowly be pushing. But it's going to be pushing. <laughs> I, I can't believe that worked either. Uh, this has been a fantastic game so far. Thanks again. Uh, I, I believe it was Mav, the guy's name on, on Gmail. Thanks again for sending this. I'm not sure if you're in this game or if you're watching this game. Who knows? Maybe you're Breezo or 920. Thank you so much for sending this game. It's been a ton of fun so far. And Roshan, going to be up in a little bit. So now the Dire is on the back foot. The Blink Dagger from the Rubik. Everything's coming up, Millhouse. Here we go. This is where uh, it gets real. And look at that. Agnum Scepter on this Razor. And yeah, Viper's really tanky. But the Eggs is going to be pretty, pretty effective. If we can get Eggs Refresher on this Razor, this game is going to be hard. Uh for the side of the dire because razor he does scale a little bit better than the viper despite the oh fuck he's got he's got a butterfly he's actually so tanky right now they, they, now now the thing is is that you need to spend unnecessary gold on an mkb just to cancel out this butterfly and honestly you don't want to do that but this viper is is absolutely massive right now the the thing that is saving them is this lena though 950 pure damage is actually huge because you're gonna get rid of pretty well a little bit less than half like you know a little bit less than half hp on this viper and that's actually pretty major um and then you couple it up with whatever's stolen from rubik uh you know obviously he, he's good against magic damage but the eye of the storm hitting perhaps is, is gonna be huge and the dire though what they are playing well is the fact that they're getting all these roshans they are going to smoke up but guess who's waiting there to pop the smoke it's going to be our good friend pudge who does have a blink dagger now smoke's going to get popped he does know that they are there lena is just so fast there's roshan going down already she's still on the deck ursa's ultimate is down though and this time this fight the aegis isn't going to break right before he goes down and there's the hook on a pudge just going so aggressive as saf here and he's just going to walk away is he level 16 now? It looks like that was... No. Level 15 and a half. Saf, you need level 15, buddy. I don't care if you jungle. Viper Strike's gonna be stolen. I don't care if, if you... I don't even know. You just need level 16, man. This is absolutely killer, but... Uh, nice decision making from Radiant saying, uh, all right, let's just go top. They're gonna have to come home. And uh, it's true. They are gonna have to come home. Dire could perhaps just look to slow... Put oh, no. They don't have a TP on Nama. Who's TPing in here? Is it the Pudge? He's just going to die if he TPs in. And yeah, he's just going to have to force stuff away. He's buying his team time though. And that's major. There's the Bash. He's going to go down and he's just going to ult Nama. Nama's going to just be fine though. And there's the racks going down. Are they just going to rotate mid here? Are we going to look at potential base race scenario? Ursa's going to lose the Aegis here. It's going to go down. Courier going down somewhere. I believe it was top lane. Meanwhile, Notion isn't going to get a kill on Nils. No, he's got the cheese. He's going to survive. Abaddon, where are you running to? Just ran through 
through the base that look like they're chasing this. Ursa, Sav's gonna get the hook. He has needed level 16. Ursa's gonna go down. They're losing the Aegis. It's a two for one. They lost the Rax as well. The most ridiculous throws I've ever seen. And oh my god, what is this game of Dota? Boots to travel on the Viper. Razor getting fat as well. And I've got to agree with them. 2.9k. He's got the Agnum Scepter. If he gets Refresher, he's gonna have to get an MKB next. And once he gets MKB, that's gonna be very scary. I mean, again, you know, you don't wanna spend the gold on MKB just for a butterfly, but once he gets MKB, what's this Viper got? You know, yeah, what, 39 armor? What the heck is that? You got a Desolator, you got Eye of the Storm, which is reducing your armor. You got an AC over here on our good pal Abaddon. And, uh, oh, pause from Razor. These pauses are a little killer, I gotta say. Um, don't understand why they didn't take the tower mid. Yeah, they, they probably should have. And ugh, Rubik, please. please. You know, pee break 51. Okay, I'll give it to them. It's been about 60 minutes, including the, the draft. Uh, I'll give it to them. I, I've had to pee before in games. And uh, game is hard. Thankfully, it's an in-house, so people will pause. Visage does manage to pick up the, the Agnum Scepter here. And... Um, the Ghost Scepters are going to be pretty key here because this Abaddon just absolutely eats people. This Razor just eats people. They need these Ghost Scepters. Uh, I mean, the pure damage is going to go through whatever. So it's not like it's going to increase the pure damage here. So get a Ghost Scepter up on your Witch Doctor. Get a Ghost Scepter up on your Visage. And, and maybe if you can turn them into E-Blades. They don't have any BKBs. And you know, they don't have any BKBs. Get a freaking Heaven's Halberd. That would be absolutely massive right now. I think it's like three and a half seconds or something. I know Abaddon's got one. What is it? 3.8 maybe. Uh, 4.5. 4.5 seconds that somebody can't right click. That's huge. How long do team fights even last? Like, I don't know. It depends, I guess. But still, I mean, if you can get a disarm, if you can get something like uh, ethereal form, if you can last a few more seconds in a fight, uh, like a few more seconds of, of death ward, you know, they've got a glimmer cape. Another thing is, is that we're moving into the late game and, and nobody's been dewarding. We've got no gems anywhere. At least the Radiants use some smokes, which I mean, smokes are absolutely huge in the game of Dota 2. Uh, getting a smoke, especially a late game smoke. And there we go. I'm back. Saf is back. Is everybody back? Probably shouting at this Rubik through Mumble. And uh, are we going to have the game start anytime soon? Perhaps. And we've got 3.8k on this Abaddon, who looks like he's moving into a Satanic next. I would have liked to see Boots of Travel. Um, as that lets you pressure out the lanes, which is what you've been doing. You know, if you can pressure and you've got the defender's advantage, you can just bots home. You know, if you force a, ra or a Viper to TP home and then you just TP away, what the heck's he going to do? Crit you two, two times? When does that ever happen? No. You can just go home and then uh, you're, you're defending 4v5. You got beautiful chase and that's the thing if you can get one or two heroes to leave and they have to disengage you've got a clockwork with a 3000 range hook and a 1750 move speed rocket after 6.84 i'm not sure what that happens or what that does but uh just throwing out some stats why not uh probably should have gone abyssal yeah I, I agree with that um an abyssal probably would have been better but an abaddon with the satanic as well as his ultimate how do you kill this guy 3.6k hp what are you going to do? You're going to go on him. He's going to pop his ultimate. You can't right click him. And then he's just going to, he's just going to say Tannic and say, okay, whatever. Then I just right click you and I get my HP back. So honestly, I, I understand where the item choice is coming from and, and it, it can work. Um, I think Abaddon just rats bottom. Yeah. I mean, really that's, that's what I agree with. They've got to stay home. Now they've, they've really put themselves at a disadvantage on the side of the dire. I will we'll take a look at these net worth graphs. They're still at an advantage. TKF, uh, Perhaps not effing hard enough this game. Slugson just going to get Viper strike and walk away. Say, all right. Probably, honestly, probably could have killed that Viper if he would have just walked up to him, stolen his damage. Maybe, maybe not. He's still not too tanky. That Viper strike we saw did like uh, quite a bit of damage, honestly. And if he gets crit a couple times, he's going to have a bad day. But with the Desolator, the Aghanim Scepter, he's the only unit around there, really. Probably could have gotten a kill. But uh, nevertheless, no big deal. Look at these crits. 700 damage crits are absolutely massive, honestly. And now, the Dire doesn't have an Aegis to work with. They don't have a cheese to work with. I believe Pudge did eat it top lane. Uh, yeah, if, if Abaddon gets a Silver Edge and... and mm, yeah, Silver Edge, pretty good. But what's he going to replace for the Silver Edge? Maybe the S&Y. I don't think that's the plan here. I, I think Abyssal's much better. 
uh, you, you guys said it earlier. <laughs> I have a co-caster, but I don't have a co-caster. But yeah, they were saying it earlier. Breezen920 saying he needs the Abyssal Blade. And, and really, you've got a BKB. But guess what goes through that? Abyssal Blade. And, and now the Dyer's looking to push in top lane. But guess who's bot lane? With the defender's advantage, Lena, she's got a TP. She's pushing out the lane there. Should probably fortify at some point. There's the Razor stealing damage already going in. Maybe a little bit too early. He's got to be careful. He's got buyback. The hook in from Punch, though. He's going to go down. There's the hook from Clockwork. Actually going to land on two heroes. One's in Cogs. It doesn't matter. He's probably going to go down. There's the Death Ward being channeled. They've got buyback on both heroes. The Laguna Blade's going to go down. Not going to be enough. Nama's in the front line. Still has his ultimate as well as the Satanic. Ursa's going to turn around and get Yules up instantly by this Lena who hasn't died just yet. South's going to get a hook onto this. Pudge is going to go down. Nama continuing to deal damage in the front lines here. Still has his Satanic, but he's got to be careful. He's getting kited. He's not going to be able to use his Satanic if he gets kited. Just pop it. There it is. He's still alive. He's got a triple kill. A mega kill. The hook in from Saf. This is going to be game. The bot's pushing in. Mid's pushing in. No. 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 Oh my god. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, what a freaking game. I'm done. I'm done. This was holy shit. This was absolutely fantastic. <sighs> wow. What a game. Saf, beautiful draft. Trash, honestly, nice draft. Little bit of, uh, you know, misfortune coming out from that Ursa Aegis and everything. <sighs> wow, guys, I hope you enjoyed this cast. I had a little bit more fun, a little bit less serious, but. Uh, Breeze and 920, thanks to those guys for uh, helping me co-cast this game uh, in spirit, obviously not in person. Uh, again, thanks to Mav for sending this game. I'm really starting to enjoy these RG2L games, having a ton of fun with them. And, and uh, I got another two coming up, so hopefully they're just as much fun. They're not as long, so I don't know if you guys, are your butts are getting sore or whatever. Uh, stick around. The end of this video has got a little bit more information about uh, other casting I do. And uh, have a good day, guys. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the video, hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to check out some of my other videos, I have my series from lane to lane where I just cast some everyday pubs that you guys send me. I also do some more professional pubs like uh, games from Koikva, Miracle, whoever I can get my hands on from Dota Buff. I have a learning series as well, so feel free to check that out. There's some more info in the description as well as some videos linked in the annotations at the end here. Thanks a lot.